Hi, this is a um, short, uh, well I say short, a short tutorial on how to um, create an ebook. So um, that covers, you know, things like uh, the EPUB format for iPad and e readers, as well as like the uh, the Mobi um, and AMZ. Uh, format for Kindle. Um, the setup that I'm using is that these books go onto a web server where people can press a link and it downloads and you know if they're browsing on an iPad it loads in iBooks etc. Um, one thing I found with this, especially with my work Microsoft server, is that they don't particularly have um, the MIME type setup so this is something that when you go and you visit a file on a web server it um, associates it so for instance uh, you know a HTML page would be text slash HTML a uh, PDF would be like a what they call an octet screen stream and stuff it allows it to download at different rates etc um, so you need to um, set that up which I'm sure if you do a quick Google of just like .epub, you know, um, mime types, etc., that will help. Um, so yeah, let's just crack on. Um, so I'll just show you a couple of the tools that we'll be using today. So you've got um, Sigil, which is a um, it's essentially an XHTML editor which is optimized for ebook publishing so it does some really cool things um, so much like words table of contents it allows you to um, create uh, a table of content based on you know the headings used and we'll go into that when we cover XHTML um, but uh, it, yeah it's really really good uh, it also has a built-in kind of ebook checker so this allows it to, um, you know, go through the ebook, and it'll tell you if that things like links to style sheets, uh, links to pages, etc., aren't correct, um, which is you know really handy. Uh, it also has these couple of views. So for instance, this one is just you know your average editor. You can change things here. So you know you've got various different styles which is the hierarchy bit, um, you know, you've got where the text goes, lists, etc. As well as like insert image, you know, um, insert chapter breaks. Uh, it's also got a split view, which is what I use a lot, which allows you to, you know, change things using HTML. And my background is as a web designer, developer, whatever, so it helps a lot for me to go into these views um, as well as this it has this kind of nifty feature where it, uh, it kind of scrolls when it wants to anyway it scrolls with you as you're uh, editing your text and this is just you know the full blown code view um, so yeah it's, it's really good and it works within a PD, uh, like an EPUB. So you just literally save and your EPUB's ready to go. It can be a little bit weird because you feel like you should compile it, but you don't need to. Um, and then as well as that, we are going to be working with this wonderful bit here, which will load eventually, called um, Calibra. When it loads, um, there you go. Uh, this is essentially a um, a means of collecting your ebooks, but it allows you to edit the like things. So, for instance, you know met the metadata, which kind of is pretty much how you know your ebook reader, e whatever, will. Um, determine how to display the book when it, in its various like menus and search functions etc uh, which is pretty cool um, as well as that it does conversions so for instance you know I've got this one here 
and it's going to convert individually and you know you change the format to MOBI which is what I was using for Kindle and the version I did but you've got this AZW3 version which I think is the proper Kindle version um, and you know this is like just a one button conversion really and then it spits out you know separate versions so for instance this might take a while for it to load up um, there you go. Um, yeah, so get rid of that. And it loads eventually. <laughs> um, but they both look the same, really. It, you know, um, because of the way that they're done, which is what. Well, it's the same language that a website's built on, it's just a little bit more strict. So, for instance, you know, some languages, uh, why are you loading two windows? Some versions of HTML are very, um, you know, very happy for you to uh, do whatever you want with them. Uh, the problem with this is that things like, you know, like uh, programs like Word, they use this and they just completely destroy any of the um, kind of meaning behind the code so I really would not recommend using words um, to generate your HTML for this because it will fail the validation but you know you can see you've got various different things etc and um, you know the same for the EPUB as well. Um, okay, so let's just kind of do a bit of a background on what this is about. So this is the quality account um, for work, which is something that every NHS um, organisation needs to produce to kind of show the quality of care um, that's delivered. Um, so this is where I first learned how to do ebooks. Uh, I did it a, separate, a different way using Pages from Mac, um, which I'd read on the website was really you know, the best way to do it. It's not. <laughs> um, use uh, the HTML thing and these tools here. Uh, you might ha you know need to learn a little bit more about how HTML is um, laid out. But uh, the, the Pages version, although it worked on the iPad, wasn't that great when it came to converting to things like Kindle. Um, so I would, I wouldn't recommend that now. Um, but I'll give you, a, you know, a brief overview. So, for instance, like the quality account, you know, it, it's organised. So you've got, if you know, your, your top five um, kind of headers. Uh, then within those, you've, you know, you, you, these are your sections, and then you've got your, your pages within that. And this is similar to the way that the ebook version works. So, the end report, which is this document, um, it contains the quality account within it anyway, uh, as you know, part of the um, the. Um, the stuff that you know an NHS trust has to do. So this is actually the start of that. Um, because it's a book, there's no like you don't break it down as much. But you know, if, if I go for summary hospital level mortality indicator, uh, you'll find it's this. Um, and yeah, this is exactly the same as that. Uh, so if I click on that one there, uh, exactly the same. Just di you know a different um, a, a different way of looking, so it fits in with you know the other um, document. Um, if I was to go to uh, if I can page source, you'd see after all of this stuff here, H twos, H threes. Uh, you know, a table. Um, now, if I go to Sigil and go to the code view, lo and behold, you have got H2s, H3s, tables. 
so it really is just, a, I mean, you know, you could essentially, if you had a website you wanted to convert into uh, an ebook, you could pretty much just copy and paste the code. Um, there are some things you need to do. So, for instance, the web version it has these, uh, you know, it, this is HTML5, not XHTML, so there's a little bit of a difference. Um, if you need to learn more about that, uh, like you know differences etc. I suggest going to this website W3 Schools. Uh, it's very good. It explains how to write you know a, a XHTML um, document. So essentially, this here is the document that's got all the stuff to make it um, validate. You just need to add. You know your H1s, your H2s, your H3s, your P's, your tables, etc. Um, into this, uh, you can also within here just read about the elements that you can use. So this will cover things like you know P. So that P is a paragraph. Um, your headers, which is not covered in here because it's here. Uh, your headers are just a hierarchy essentially so you know you're only ever really going to have well you're only going to have one H1 um, which I use in my ebook as the, uh, like a, a title for a section so you know the voluntary uh, reporting that we had here uh, that would be the title and then the H2 would be the summary hospital indicator uh, then you know the H2 would be the the, um, the chapter um, title, and then H3 would be any title really. Um, obviously, if there's any titles underneath those H3s, then the H4s. Um, you know, within that's H5, and within that is H6. There's no H7, so don't um, put those in because it won't validate. Um, and then you know, uh, tables are a little bit more complex. Uh, you can read about it on here though, but basically you've got a table tag within those, you've got TR which is a table row and then TD which is like a a column essentially, you know, it's the data within that row for that column so you would only, like for every row you only have one TR but you can have multiple TDs, but you, for every number of TDs in that table you need the adjacent number for every row um, I mean, the best thing to do is basically, you know, just use the examples really and learn. Um, but you know, for basic ebook editing, you only need those um, that that knowledge. Uh, then you know, there's things like images, which uh, Sigil kind of works out for you anyway. So that's fine. I, to be honest, it's it's probably easiest just to use you know this thing here and use the tools. Um, I not entirely sure. I don't think there is a way to put tables in there, so that's probably where we're going to have to, you know, do some some uh, XHTML. But you know, for the easiness of this tool, it's a uh, price I'm sure most people are willing to pay. Um, you know, to generate. So so once you've got your headers properly, so you know, this is the voluntary report, and this is you know so this is H1. This is H2, this is H3, uh, then you go to generate TOCs, and you know, so I do two levels, which then gives me what I've got on the, the, um, the right. So you see here, so this is the H1, and within that, I've got each individual page, which was, you know, in our um, header here. So you know the, the structure of the ebook is is rather important. Um, if you do, I, I will just say if you do any H uh, like XHTML editing, uh, be sure to use this validator. So validator.w3.org. Um, what this allows you to do is to validate by direct input. I you copy and paste what's on this page <laughs> into your your thing. Um, there is no, unfortunately, set, select all code within um, Sigil yet, which is a little bit 
annoying. Um, but when we eventually get to the end of the page, there you go, and we copy that, and we go into this and paste. It should return green, there you go, um, which means that there's no errors. It's, it's valid XHTML 1.1, which is the strictest that you can get. Um, so, you know, for instance, by strict, I mean that when an ebook reader reads it, it's looking at these things. This is why, you know, things like a HTML, uh, an XHTML, and HTML5, these are standards of ways of pre uh, presenting um, you know, the kind of the structure of web pages. Um, so a browser, you know, might, well, the idea is that browsers are supposed to render these, like, elements um, in a standardized way. Certain people, again, Microsoft, don't do that. And if you've ever spoken to a web developer and they mention, or you mention IE6, they'll shudder. Uh, <laughs> this is due to the fact that IE6, which most NHS trusts probably still use, isn't actually that good <laughs> when it comes to rendering these things. Um, so, yeah, I'll just um, get out of that. So, that's how you structure it. and. You know, how to um, essentially do it. So really in Sigil you've got, so it breaks it down into three things. You've got images, which is where you put all your you know, your JPEGs that you want to use within the document. Uh, you've got your text, which is like you create an XHTML um, file for every single uh, page that you want. So you know, these would be the, your chapters essentially. Um, so I shouldn't say page, because the the good thing about this EPUB thing is, is that you know depending on on how big the the page size is, is it scales it. So you know this, for instance, if you had a um, a really big e-reader, this might be one page. If you've got a really small e-reader, it could be like six, but it doesn't break it up, and you can still search through the chapters and stuff, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, for each, each chapter you want a new XHTML page, uh, so for instance this is a 156 page Word document, uh, which I've converted into, oh I don't know how many pages, about 46 or something like that pages. Um, and you know, each one, again, because I had the web version I just copy and pasted the source code and bung, like, you know, put it into every single uh, chapter that it needed to be, you know, some of these, like for instance, the salary information, it's a bit beastly <laughs> in this. It's massive, um, but once it's done, you've got it in a format which you know you're going to be able to convert into any other thing. Uh, then, after you've got your text, you've got styles, which. Uh, you know, it's a bit hard to, to show you without kind of going into what CSS is, but essentially um, CSS is a um, it's, it's a it's a what is known as a style sheet. So for each H1 element that you put in or heading one element that you put into your document, you can then define how it looks. Um, so for instance, you know on my one, uh, I've got very big headers. Uh, they're twice the normal font size, um, and they're F31354, which is that pink colour. Uh, then, you know, for the other header colours, they're blue. Um, that's pretty much all it says. It lays out a couple of other things, you know, about kind of like here it says what type of li like ordered list. So that's like, you know, your one, two, three list. So instead of that, I've got A, B, C, D, you know. Um, that's pretty much all it all of this does um, but it does mean that you know you can add some kind of style to your ebook um, so if I go here you'll see that here and this is in again on that W3 schools it tell you how to link things um, but yeah, essentially this says look into this styles folder uh, for this print CSS file 
and that pretty much styles the entire page. Uh, you might notice it's got dot dot slash, which means go up a directory. Um, so for instance, because this file is in the text directory, it needs to go out into this folder here and then go back into this styles folder to find that file. Uh, you'll notice that every link is like this as well. So, you know, link text, although it's in the same folder, it needs to do this to get to it. This just basically makes sure that, you know, it's always going to know where to go when you need to find your, uh, your you know, your other files. Um, yeah, so um, I won't go too much more in detail because I think I've covered the basics of this. And I'm sure, you know, once you've downloaded this piece of software and you've played around with it, you're get to grips with you know whichever method works for you um, and yeah in Calibra uh, you know you you just import uh, the file so that would be add books you browse for the EPUB version it comes in here you know you go in you edit your metadata so that you know you can add a, a cover for it um, which I've, you know, it's just a JPEG really. Uh, probably don't have any decent ones in here. Uh, uh, where are your documents, maybe? Okay, so, so count docular pixel thing, like so. That's going to be the ebook cover. You press OK. Bam. And when you go into iTunes, it will use this picture uh, as the uh, as as the, what you call it um, as as the, uh, the the cover image. Um, so, for instance, if I go to other, scroll down a bit, uh, go to iTunes, and open it. iTunes is oh I've already got it in there that's why I'll delete that then don't want that no more uh, okay in fact it might just be easier to try oh uh, no actually no but um where are you iTunes Uh, what did I say about that? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, ignore this. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so this is basically where your files are. You, you know, you've got your mobby, you've got your EPUB, and that's what you'd put onto the um, onto the website uh, for them to download, or you know, you distribute this to your various different stores that you want to sell it on, depending on what you're going for. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much just the workflow. You use the Sigil app to make your pages using the editor, you know, or the XHTML, and then you use um, Calibre to essentially just convert it to whatever format you want. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, that's pretty much it. To download the apps, you need to go, I mean, you just search them, but they're all multi platform, open source, you know. Um, so you can use them on whatever machine as long as you can download them uh, so for instance Sigil is on Google Code as it says it's a what you see is what you get ebook editor uh, and you know it kind of explains a little bit on it there but you would just download the version so I'm on a Mac uh, because this is at home but at work I would download the uh, setup exe file which would just run through and say hey you know, do you want it to use this do you want to install this etc um, and then with Calibra that isn't a, a Google code hosted project unfortunately you just download it um, but it's available on Windows here, it's available on OS X here, it's available on Linux, 
uh, it's available, you know, just to put on a USB drive and just run around and, you know, run it from that, uh, which is a pretty nifty feature. Uh, this is, you know, how to kind of download the source code for it, etc. Um, but, you know, there's, there are your two tools, and, yeah, you just upload it. When someone, you know, presses the download button, it comes down to here. Uh, that's, you know, pretty much the basics of it. Um, you know, feel free to... Uh, Send me a, a, a tweet if you want, like a short tutorial on how to, um, you know, program in XHTML. Uh, you know, I'm happy to kind of run, give a rundown of those features. Um, so yeah, just uh, let me know what you thought. If there's any other bits you want explained, and. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for taking up 26 minutes of your time. <laughs>